Hello there everyone, this is Brother Birch. In this video I will be teaching you how you're going to uh, work on most of your assignments this semester and how you're going to submit them, okay, in addition to all of your, your tests throughout the semester outside of the final exam. So if I, so I just logged into our CS124 course. Uh, if I click on start here, it'll just kind of take me to the top and, and you won't see like these instructor resources that I have, but you'll have this textbook access module. And you can see this link getting set up in the Linux lab. Let's go ahead and click on that. All right, and it has two options for a Microsoft Windows machine. Okay, um, if you have a Mac, you can use one of these options down here. It will be similar. Okay, um, but for what I'm going to do, I'm going to teach you guys how to use how to set up MOBA Xterm. Okay, so for all of your assignments, you are going to be submitting them through the Linux lab. Okay, so you'll have your own account. It's basically just a remote computer here on campus that you'll connect to on your computer and MOBA Xterm or PuTTY or Terminal or whichever program you use will help you to do that. Okay, So on Windows, a, a really simple and, and easy and convenient solution that, solution that I enjoy using is MOBA Xterm to be able to use this. So we'll go to the MOBA Xterm website to download it. I'll say get MOBA Xterm now, free version. And I've had issues with the uh, installer edition, so I'm just going to download the portable one. Okay, let's give it a sec to download. If I go back over here and look through this, um, you can see it's going to have me uh, connect to a specific IP address. Okay, so the IP addresses that we can use for this class are 157.201.194.201 through 210. So this last octet here, I can do 201, 202, 203, all the way up to 210. Okay, So you can pick any one of those. Sometimes one of them will be down and you have to do a different one, but all of your data will be stored in the same place. Okay, So the, I could connect to 1 today and connect to uh, 210 tomorrow and, um, and that would be just fine. My data would still be in both places. So I'm going to extract these files. I'm going to hit extract and they are here. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, so if I, if I was going to keep this, I, w I would put it into like a programs file or, or something like that, like your programs file, program files that you have on your computer or something. But right now in this video, I'm just going to leave this here uh, in my downloads. Okay. But again, I'd recommend that you move that. So let's open this up and let's see what it does. All right. So this window just came up. There's quite a bit going on here. All right. Let's go back to our instructions and see. Uh, what it wants us to do. So it says double click it um, and then click the session button in the upper left hand corner to create a session. All right, we're going to use SSH for everything in this class, so just disregard everything else. And then I need a remote host, my username, and my port number. All right, so let's see our instructions. Um, so my port, I could just use this one if I wanted to. Again, 201 through 210. And I'll put that here. And then the username. I'll go ahead and enter that. So your username is either going to be the first part of your email address. Um, so when I was a student here, I'm going to click this. When I was a student here, it was like B-I-R, and then I don't remember what it was. You know, something like that. So your username is either going to be that or the the username that you specify every time you log into my byui.edu. Okay. So mine is Bert N. That's my username. And then if I come down in here, let's see what port it wants us to use. Change the port from 22 to 215. Okay. So we'll open up port 215, and I'll say okay. Let's connect. So notice it says Birch N at this IP address. All right. Now if I was using a terminal window in um, like a Google Chrome extension or for Google Chrome or or for Chromebooks, I mean, or if I was using a terminal window in, if I had an Apple computer, then it would look something really similar to this as far as what I would type in, okay? But then my password, I'll just type in my password. Notice that it's not typing anything here. I just typed in my password, I'm gonna hit enter, and then it typed in my password, and it says, do you wanna save it? And I'll go ahead and say yes, all right? And so then every time I log in, I wanna have to keep on typing my username and password, so that'll be nice. All right, so let's head back into here. Um, Okay, and now it says you're connected to the Linux lab. Congratulations. Uh, it will say um, to uh, reset your password because when you log in, you're going to have a default password. 
pretty sure if I go back one, it'll show. Um, yeah, so this is your default password. Okay, Temple 4 DPC. Um, and then again, it talks about your username, what username it'll be. Okay, and so once you come in here, uh, you're going to want to change that password. So if I needed to change my password, I would come into here and I would type in the command um, YP password, like that. So YPP ASSWD. And then I would specify um, what password I would need to change. Okay, so that's actually wrong. So I just Googled it. It says, change your own user account's password. Use the password command, and then it'll show what, it'll have you type in your current password, and then enter your new password, and then retype it, and then it'll say that you successfully updated it. Okay, so that is how you will change your password. Okay, and then once you're in here, there's a couple of things that you can do. So if I type in ls, it'll show me what is in this current directory. Okay, now over here, I have this little file tree with a bunch of hidden files that you don't really have to worry about right now, okay? Um, but among those, I have this temp.cpp, a.out, and I have these two directories that are all showing right here, okay? Now, there's a couple ways that I can navigate in here. I can say cd, change directory, into 124. A directory is just like a folder, pretty much. And if I type in ls in there to say, um, you know, basically list the contents of this directory, it'll show everything in there. But I can also click on 124 over here and it'll show me everything in there. There's one hidden folder right here, but everything else is showing up when I type in this directory. All right, um, again, I can say CD assignments, and if I type in LS, it'll show me what's in that folder, and I can click on here, and I can see that exact same thing coming up. And I can just keep on clicking and see, and, and open up these different things. Okay, now here's the main thing that I wanna show you. So, uh, in this class, you will be using a text editor. All right. Now, there's a default text editor that comes with uh, with MOBA Xterm that you can use. There's also a, a text editor that you can use inside of the Linux server called Emacs. I don't recommend that you use either one of those. What I recommend that you use is Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I would just type in VS Code Download. It comes over here. It's a free program, and it's fantastic. And, you know, once you download whichever one you have and install it, it's going to look something like, let me pull it up here like this okay you might have like a welcome page all right but it'll be it'll be pretty much the same thing all right you, I could say you know open folder and I could have like a folder with my programs or something like that um, I can have multiple folders open inside of my workspace and then for each one you know I can have I, I can like see my programs and then when I want to look at something you know I I can pull it up and and see my code and I can edit it and everything like that okay now the reason I bring this up is because in MOBA Xterm, I can specify a default text editor. So when I open this, um, if I just double click on it, it'll open it with my default text editor, okay, because I set that up. But if I say open with default program, oh, well, my default program set up. All right, because um, the first time you click on one of these, well, let's see, so we go into settings, configuration, ooh, default text editor. All right, so my default text editor program is MOBA text editor, which is fine, but I don't want it. So I would say, you know, I'm going to change this to my VS Code text editor. I'm pretty sure my VS Code program is in program files. Mm, nope, not here. All right, so I just opened up the properties of my Visual Studio Code download. I just right clicked on it and hit properties. And it shows it's in my app data folder. Okay, so let's head back to. Nathan, app data, local, and programs, Microsoft VS Code, and here is our little executable file. Okay, so I'll hit OK, and now if I just double click on this, it'll pop it up in Visual Studio Code, and I'll have this beautiful text editor that I can work with. I can do anything I want, and let's say I want to run this. So notice that this is being stored app data, local temp, MXT124 remote files. All right, so this is actually on the server, all right, and I just open it up on my computer, but this file is being stored on the server, okay? So if I make a change, let's say I'm really excited about this Hello World program, all right? Uh, I hit Save, I hit Control S, and it says, hey, this has been modified. Do you want to replace the remote file on this server with the new one? And I'll always say, auto save, do not ask me again, because I'll always want it to update, okay? So now, if I type in the command like cat uh, assignment 10.cpp 
oh, whoops. So CD unit one, and then I'll just hit up arrow twice to find that command that I already executed. And you can see there's all my exclamation marks. Okay, cat will just print out the contents of any file. All right, so I can see that there, and now I can test this out. So I could say, uh, you know, test bed. Well, first of all, I can compile it. So I can say G++ uh, assignment uh, one zero, and I can hit tab to finish that. It'll compile it, and then I can say A dot out, and you can see it outputs hello world. Okay, so it's working. And then I can say I want to test it, so I'll say test bed uh, CS124 assignment one zero, and then my, my file name. Okay. Oh, invalid test instructions. Okay, so I just opened up my book and has been compile it, run it, and then here's the test bed command. All right, so I was close. So I'll come back over here and I'll just right click right here to paste it. Oh, that's nice. So I'll go ahead and paste it. Okay, so test bed, CS124, assign 10, and then my file name. I'll run that and it says, ooh, test failed. Okay, it didn't want all these exclamation marks. That's what it got and this is what it expected. So I would come back to my text editor. I'd be like, you know what? Maybe I'm not that excited about it anymore. Hit save, come back over here. And now if I type in cat, we can see that it auto saved it. Okay, so that's nice. And now I'll run my test bit command again. And you can see now it passes. All right, so this is really nice because you'll be using this throughout the entire semester. Every single assignment uh, that you have, you are going to come into here, you're going to run the style checker, you're going to submit it, and when you submit it, it will basically copy the file that you have into my directory. So we'll both have a copy of it, and um, you know, my directory, it'll, it'll run testbed on it, it'll run style checker on it and everything, and, um, and I'll, it'll, it'll grade your file, you know. Um, so, and that's how this entire semester is going to work out. So I highly recommend that you download MOBA Xterm. All right, and I highly recommend that you download Visual Studio Code because it's a nice text editor that you can use that'll make things really convenient. Um, and yeah, so that's just a little bit of how you can get set up in this course and kind of how we're going to be using the Linux lab and everything. So uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, but I hope that this video is helpful for you.